growth, friendship, and ruin. Across the life of the Dream SMP, these three truths have shaped the story into one of the most treasured in Minecraft history. Spanning many months and including some of the most talented content creators in the community, the story has evolved well past that ever thought to come from a Minecraft server. To truly understand the story, we must go back to the beginning. Today, I will take you on a journey through the early days of the server and tell the story of part one of the Dream SMP. Really quick, this video took weeks to make, so if you could take one second to subscribe, it is completely free and it would make my day. Thank you. Also, thanks to Lord Cantor for letting me use his recreation of the Dream SMP for this video. If you want to see how he managed to rebuild the server block for block, go check out his channel in the top link of the description. Anyway, let's start from the beginning. Day 1 of the Dream SMP A time before war, before nations, before death. A much simpler time than what we know today. A time of peace. On April 25th, Dream and George created what has grown into one of the most influential Minecraft servers ever. But to them, it was just a normal survival world. A few months prior, on February 5th, Minecraft released their first snapshot of 1.16, the Nether Update. Because of Dream's focus on his channel, as well as his speedrunning grind that started shortly after, Dream had not had time to truly explore the new update. This world finally gave him a chance to do so. During their first stream, Dream and George intended just to play the game. No speedrunning, no Minecraft manhunt, just plain old survival. And that's exactly what they did. After making a portal, Dream and George explored the new biomes and structures added to the game. After a long journey through the nether, the two decided to head back. After dying in the nether, the two journeyed back to gather- They finally were able to find their stuff and escape- Yeah, uh, they lost all their stuff. Later, they finally were able to explore the Bastion with no problems, and by the end of the stream, things were looking good. Soon after the beginning of the SMP, its first members other than Dream and George were added. These included Sapnap, the third member of the Dream Team, as well as their close friends It's Alyssa and Awesome Dude. Over the next streams, the five were able to develop the world considerably. One of these projects included the centerpiece of the SMP and oldest building on the server, the Community House. Located in the middle of the lake, the Community House, as well as the paths branching off of it, still stands today as a hub for travel across the main server. A few other notable builds include the Community Nether Portal, which also remains a very important location today, and the Courthouse, which is pretty self-explanatory. The server was growing. And along with it, the player base grew too. Before long, two new members have been added to the server, Punk and Bad Boy Halo. Although Bad Boy Halo was a neutral force during the early days of the server, his presence would be felt much more later in the story. Punk, on the other hand, got to work right away building his first giant lemon tree. He also began trapping people's bases. He started this with George. In an act of revenge for the trap, George decided to burn down the entirety of Ponk's lemon tree, prompting him to build another one farther down the path. But little did he know, this second tree, along with his careless actions of setting traps in people's bases, would drive the server to chaos, causing the first war. But before that happened, another player was added to the server. The most important addition yet. This player was Tommy Init. Tommy Init was an up and coming creator who knew how to start drama. After his channel saw early success from Hypixel Skyblock, he was invited to join the new creator server, SMP Earth. 
holding over 60 creators, many with millions of subscribers, this was a huge opportunity for Tommy. And he did not hesitate to try to fight all of them. He entered the Dream SMP with the same goal. Coming off the recently ending SMP Earth, Tommy was ready for more fighting. And on his first day, he got straight to work. July 4th. After hours of streaming, Tommy gets a completely out of the blue message from Dream inviting him to the SMP. Joining without hesitation, Tommy immediately set out to do one thing. Annoy everyone. He quickly became a problem, stealing from chess and killing George repeatedly. This resulted in him being taken to jail within about 20 minutes of joining the server. A record that stands to this day. After pulling an epic gamer move and escaping, he continued to destroy things. This resulted in Dream teleporting him far away from spawn, banishing him temporarily. However, Tommy was not going to let this stop him from annoying them. Coming back by dying, Dream kept having to teleport him. This went on for a few minutes before Tommy in it had become the first player to be banned on the server. One Twitter block later, and Tommy was back. This time, he would follow the rules. Well, kinda. After causing a bit more damage and claiming everything he could see as his property, Tommy decided to end his stream. His actions on the first day of the server would only be the beginning, as he would be streaming nearly every day on the SMP. Two days later, the first war on the Dream SMP began. It all started when Tommy decided to build his house in a hill directly next to Ponk's giant lemon tree. Tommy being Tommy, they almost immediately began fighting over land. This resulted in Ponk killing Tommy and also trapping his house. Following the trolling of his house, Sapnap seeked revenge. And he was able to get it by burning down most of Ponk's lemon tree. Enraged by his actions, Ponk teamed up with It's Alyssa to get him back again. They then burned down his entire house. They had crossed the line. Sapnap knew he had to put an end to this, but he couldn't do it alone. Though it took some convincing, Sapnap was able to get Tommy on his side, and together, they would kill Ponk and Alyssa. Until, in the middle of their fight, Dream logged on. Dream, the creator of the world, and so far the only one to stop Tommy's fits of destruction, had had enough. He had created the server to be a place to escape conflict, to work together, to create, and to have fun. And war had no place there. After watching the server begin to spiral into chaos, Dream decided to step in and stop the fighting but he quickly discovered he was very undergeared, and within seconds, Tommy and Sapnap had killed him as well. The fighting escalated once again and soon nearly the entire server was involved in the conflict. Together, Sapnap and Tommy wiped out everyone standing in their way, even forcing Dream to log out temporarily. That was until something happened that turned the tides of the battle. Dream had stolen Tommy's most prized possessions on the server. His music discs. Tommy had spent hours finding these discs and was not about to let that time go to waste. He had to get them back. Because Tommy and Sabnap were allies, Sabnap decided to help Tommy steal the discs back from Dream. Dream then joined the call and told Tommy that because he had proven to be untrustworthy, he would not be getting his discs back. And if he decided to start any conflict again, the discs would be burned. While this was happening, Sapnap began looking for where Dream had hidden the discs. And a few minutes later, he found one. Running from Dream, who followed close behind, Sapnap passed the disc to Tommy, who then ran to his base, entered his mine, 
and hid the disc in a ravine. With Dream close behind, Tommy then faked hiding the disc in a completely different part of the ravine, distracting him long enough for Tommy to come up with a plan. The plan that would get his other music disc back from Dream and win him the first battle. But him and Sapnap couldn't do it alone. They needed someone else. And Tommy knew just the guy for the job. Tubbo and Tommy had been friends since the beginning. They met when Tubbo had been streaming on zero viewers for almost a year and Tommy rated him with 20. Later on Discord, the two started talking, and before long, they began streaming together. Throughout the Hypixel Skyblock phase and SMP Earth, Tubbo was there, scamming, fighting, and laughing his way to victory alongside Tommy. Tubbo was a wholesome presence in contrast to Tommy and preserved the lightheartedness found in the early days of the server. Joining just a few days after Tommy, Tubbo quickly established himself as a force of good. Despite them being nearly opposites, the two unlikely friends fought together during every battle in the early days of the SMP. It was Tommy and Tubbo versus the world. So when Tommy and Sapnap needed some backup, he knew Tubbo would be there. Together, the three of them plotted to take down Dream and take back Tommy's second disc. Tommy's plan was simple. Surround Dream and all three attack him with axes to do the maximum damage possible. He hoped this would give them at least a chance of killing Dream, and since Tommy knew Dream had the disc in his inventory, this was their only chance of getting it back. As the fighting began, things were not looking good. After dying, Tommy and Sapnap brought a bed down to the ravine and set their spawn point nearby. The three then regrouped for one final ambush on Dream. But he found them first. After Sapnap was killed, it was all up to Tommy and Tubbo to finish the job. Using gravel as a blockade, the two began to chip away at Dream's health. Tommy got a few good hits before falling to Dream, leaving it all up to Tubbo. And as Dream was retreating to heal, Tubbo chased him down, managing to kill him. They had done it. Together, the team had managed to take down the most powerful man on the server, and Tommy's most prized possessions were back in his hands. After a quick celebration, Tommy decided it would be best to hide the discs in a chest off camera so Dream couldn't steal them when he was offline. But he quickly realized that Dream would not give up that easily. Sure, Tommy had won the battle, but the war was far from over. A few days after Tommy joined the SMP, Tubbo was not the only new member to be added. Three more of their friends, Purpled, Fundy, and Puns, were whitelisted as well. The SMP was now beginning to flourish. New players meant new development, and from this point forward, the server really started to take shape. The first major build was Purpled's UFO. Lying fairly close to the community house in the same direction as Tommy's base, the UFO was one of the better looking builds for quite a while. A socializing club was also constructed for resolving an issue that later arose between Fundy, Purple, and Tubbo. Finally, both Fundy and Dream created secret bases underground. These new builds, along with the arising storyline of the Disc Saga and other conflicts on the server, helped the Dream SMP quickly gain popularity on YouTube and Twitch. And as development continued in the world, so did it in the battle for the Discs. On July 10th, one day after his previous battle with Dream, Tommy logged on to the SMP, only to see that Dream had torn apart all of the land surrounding his base looking for the discs. And he found them. He was able to do this because when Tommy was hiding the discs off camera, he left his game sounds on. This allowed Dream to get an idea of where he had hidden them based on analyzing when he took fall damage and what blocks he mined before placing the chest. The discs had been lost once again. 
and this time, Dream would not let them back so easily. Tommy's first plan was to bargain with Dream, but that quickly went downhill when Tubbo pointed out that the only thing Tommy had of value was his netherite chestplate. After their genius idea of setting an ultimatum was shut down by Dream walking out of the building, Dream threatened to burn Tommy's discs if he didn't give him the netherite chestplate within 20 minutes. This left only one reasonable solution. One way for Tommy to get his discs back once and for all. Him and Tubbo would try and portal trap Dream and kill him with beds. Why did they actually think that would work? He literally just said he doesn't have the discs in his inventory. This plan was absolutely foolproof. There was no way it wouldn't work. Oh, um, okay. Knowing Dream knew their plan, Tommy and Tubbo were sure he had trapped the portal on the other side. Lucky for Tommy, he had enderpearls and was able to escape. Tubbo, on the other hand, was slain by Dream. And somehow, Tommy died as well. Their plan was not going too well. They had already both died and had made no more progress towards recovering the discs. They then met peacefully with Dream, who decided to give Tommy one last chance to trade his chest plate for the discs. Tommy convinced Dream to give him 10 more minutes to think about it, buying him time to think of another plan. This time, Tommy's plan was different. It was literally the exact same plan. After yet another failed negotiation, an opportunity arose for one of the discs to be stolen. Dream, after taking out both Tommy and Tubbo multiple times, was feeling very confident. Because of this, he decided it would be funny to taunt them by playing the disc. But Tommy and Tubbo were ready. After playing it again higher up so they couldn't seal it, Dream began to build a blockade next to the jukebox. But Tubbo managed to slip through, ejecting the disc from the jukebox and taking it. He ran for his life. But eventually Dream killed both of them and took it back again. In the words of Tommy, they had a glimpse at freedom. But the battle continued. Building higher and higher, Dream continued to taunt Tommy with his discs, holding them just out of reach. Until Dream was distracted by Tubbo, allowing Tommy to drop in from above and steal the disc back. Knowing it wouldn't be safe in the skies, Tommy dropped the disc down to Tubbo. However, Tubbo was not able to find it before Dream realized what happened and took back the disc once again. Twice now, the two had been incredibly close to victory only to have the disc slip away at the last second. The fighting continued but ultimately led nowhere. And so, Tommy and Tubbo decided to take the trade. Tommy's netherite chestplate for the discs. As they prepared for the trade, Tommy thought back to the days of Skyblock. He was the king of scamming. Surely there was a way to beat Dream. Take back the discs while keeping his chestplate as well. Then, he remembered Tubbo, who had been by his side the entire time. They both knew exactly what to do. As Dream dropped the discs, and Tommy dropped the chest plate, Tubbo made a break for the discs. By the time Dream realized what was happening, it was too late. Tubbo had grabbed both of the discs and logged out. It was a race for the chest plate. But Tommy won, managing to disconnect after picking it up. All that was left was Dream. Alone in the ruins of a battle he'd thought he'd won. With nothing. Or so they thought. Unbeknownst to Tommy and Tubbo, Dream had not dropped the real discs. The ones he traded were fakes. The finale of the disc saga took place the next day. As Tommy logged on, still holding the netherite chestplate, he looked around for a bit, then went to find Tubbo. But Tubbo had his own problems to deal with. After conflict arose between Fundy, Purple, and Tubbo, they decided to settle their affairs in the socializing club. 
During their conversation, Tommy burst through the door asking for Tubbo's help to finish the war. But war would have to wait. As in the socializing club, there are no weapons and no fighting allowed for any reason. So they moved outside. After that encounter, Tommy and Tubbo moved forward with their plan to find the discs. And Tommy knew exactly how they would do it. He believed that the discs were hidden in Dream's secret base, but he had no idea where it was. So with Tubbo's help, Tommy would use an exploit to see through walls and find it. The plan worked, and within minutes, they had broken into the base. But once again, this wouldn't be the end. The discs weren't there. Confused, Tommy and Tubbo asked around to see if anyone knew where the discs were. But they were out of luck. Until Dream logged on to the server. After some more negotiation, including a stack of diamonds the two had stolen from Dream, they once again agreed to trade the netherite chestplate for the discs. This time, there was no scamming. And just like that, the music discs were back in the hands of Tommy. Together, Tommy and Tubbo had won the war. And to celebrate, the two sat on a bench near Tommy's house and listened to one of the discs. Overlooking the land, they thought about what they'd accomplished. Until a sudden realization hit. They had gotten the discs before. But it didn't matter. Anyone could take them at any time. There was only one safe place on the entire server that left no chance of anyone stealing the discs. An ender chest. But as far as they knew, no ender chests had been made yet. So the two would have to quickly gather the materials and make their own before someone tried to steal the discs. If you don't know, an ender chest is crafted with an eye of enders surrounded by obsidian blocks. So all in all, they would need 8 obsidian, 1 blaze powder, and 1 ender pearl. They started by asking around for blaze rods. After Fundy wasn't interested, they went to talk to Puns, who despite having his lawn griefed by the build battle the day before, and Tommy stealing some golden apples, agreed to supply them with a blaze rod and an ender pearl in exchange for an apple. But as Tommy got the apple, and began making his way to Puns, Dream began to attack. Upon hearing their plans to seal the discs away in an ender chest, Dream knew if he wanted to stay in control, he had to stop them. Tommy quickly traded for the blaze rod and pearl immediately running away as Dream began his pursuit. Tommy and Tubbo had to think of a plan, and quick. Dream is no stranger to chases and Tommy knew he was living on borrowed time. Still needing 8 obsidian to craft the chest, Tommy had an idea. If Tubbo could distract Dream for just a minute or two, Tommy could rush over to the community nether portal and break enough obsidian to craft the chest. As Tommy made his way to the portal and began mining, Tubbo followed Dream, telling Tommy exactly where they were. 1. 2. 3. Tommy had almost gotten half the obsidian they needed when Dream started shooting at him from a nearby watchtower. Barely alive with one heart, just a single arrow could end the dream of securing the discs. Tubbo made his way to Tommy, covering him and supplying food. 4. 5. Dream made his way to the portal, Tubbo only managing to stall a few seconds. The two ran, taking refuge in the community house and blocking off the doors. Tubbo stayed on the ground floor, sacrificing his life and buying Tommy just enough time to escape from the roof. 6. 7. They were so close. All that stood between them and freedom was a green man and a single piece of obsidian. Dream chased Tommy. A relentless storm of arrows following Tommy's every step. He couldn't do it. If he stops running, Dream kills him. If he keeps running for long, he loses his sprint and Dream kills him. There was nothing Tommy could do. But he didn't have to do anything. 
He had Tubbo. Tubbo remembered he had a piece of obsidian at his house and ran there immediately. Now, Tommy was the one stalling. As Tubbo grabbed the obsidian, he went out back and saw Tommy loop around towards the back of his house. Tubbo then dropped the obsidian, as well as some food, and stalled Dream just long enough for Tommy to craft the ender chest and lock away the discs for good. Together, against all odds, the two friends managed to save Tommy's most prized possessions from the wrath of Dream. With this, the disc saga was over, at least for now, and the server was at peace once again. The next two weeks would be the most peaceful the server had ever seen since Tommy joined. With the end of the first major war, it seemed everyone needed a break from the chaos. But soon, a new player would be added to the SMP. A player that would completely change the nature of the server. A storyteller. A mastermind of words. His ideas growing to define the server and made the story something people would remember. And July 24th, just 20 days after Tommy joined, one moment changed the course of the server forever. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you get notified when part 2 comes out. Make sure to go subscribe to my second channel as well, as I will be posting a Q&A sometime soon. Comment down below your thoughts on the video and what you think could be better. Anyway, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next video.